Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. France's butter sector churned up after watchdog exposes flaws. What are the best workouts for anxiety according to science? Trump toggles between the courtroom and the campaign in the final week before 2024 voting begins. Sports betting line. Judges in England and Wales are given cautious approval to use AI in writing legal opinions. France's butter sector churned up after watchdog exposes flaws. RFI. A recent survey conducted by the Directorate General for Competition, Consumer Affairs and Fraud Prevention in France found that nearly a third of dairy establishments in the milk fat sector had abnormal practices, while around 20% were non-compliant. The study focused on butter manufacturers, cow farms, supermarket chains, bakeries, and confectioners, and found that the main issues related to the manufacturing process, composition, and labeling of butter and fats. Some of the specific problems identified included excessive water content in the products and insufficient salt levels in semi-salted butter. The study also found that some farmers did not meet criteria for designations like protected designation of origin or farmhouse due to not sourcing enough cream from farms. The directorate issued 30 warnings based on the findings of the investigation. What are the best workouts for anxiety according to science? The Independent. Exercise is as good for the mind as it is for the body, according to Damien Bailey, a professor of physiology and biochemistry at the University of South Wales. Bailey said that exercise could turn our brain's biological clock back by up to two decades, making it younger, healthier and boosting intelligence and mood. Exercise has also been shown to help with dementia, depression, anxiety and emotional distress. Trump toggles between the courtroom and the campaign in the final week before 2024 voting begins. CNN. Donald Trump's legal troubles are set to overshadow the 2024 election, with the former president facing four criminal trials. Trump's strategy of claiming he won the 2020 election, which is central to two of the trials, has made him the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. The trials, which include charges of election interference and civil fraud, will be closely watched by voters. Trump's rivals for the nomination, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, have struggled to disqualify him as a strong nominee. Trump has accused both of running scared, but neither has criticized his behavior on January 6, 2021, when a mob of his supporters stormed the Capitol in an attempt to overturn the election result. Sports betting line. Associated Press. The article lists the betting lines for various college football, NBA, college basketball, and NHL games. It includes the point spreads and over-under totals for each game. Readers are directed to visit the FanDuel Sportsbook for the latest odds. Judges in England and Wales are given cautious approval to use AI in writing legal opinions. Associated Press. The courts and tribunals judiciary in England and Wales has given judges permission to use artificial intelligence, AI, to help produce rulings. The guidance states that AI can be used to write opinions but should not be used for research or legal analysis. The judiciary warned that AI can fabricate information and provide misleading, inaccurate, and biased information. Although the guidance is seen as a cautious step towards the use of AI in the legal system, it is also viewed as proactive given the slow pace at which the legal profession has embraced technological change. The move places England and Wales at the forefront of courts addressing AI, although the European Commission for the Efficiency of Justice of the Council of Europe issued an ethical charter on the use of AI in court systems five years ago. The U.S. Supreme Court has not yet established guidance on AI, although individual courts and judges have set their own rules. The guidance for England and Wales has been welcomed by legal experts but was criticized for a lack of accountability mechanisms. The voice of business no longer speaks for anyone. Telegraph. The Confederation of British Industry, CBI, is losing influence as it is no longer considered the definitive voice of UK business, according to The Telegraph. The CBI has faced criticism in the past, but it was largely from Tory Eurosceptics. Now the criticism is coming from all angles, with the group struggling to exert political influence, particularly as Britain approaches an election year. Rupert Soames, who recently became the president of the CBI, will have to convince city executives that the group can better influence Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer than they can directly. Hardyville Vision, Housing, Schools Rivaling Hilton Head Area, New I-95 Exit and more. Yahoo! Harry Williams, the mayor of Hardyville, South Carolina, will not run for re-election in November after two terms. He hopes to see his vision of the town as more attractive than Ockady, Bluffton, and Hilton Head become a reality. The plan is to create a new master plan with developers that prioritizes quality of life, including impact fees to pay for roads and public services such as police and fire departments.
In addition, the plan provides incentives for young families to move into Hardyville and attract businesses to the region. The Riverport Commerce Park is already attracting investment, and Williams believes that it will create jobs and provide funding for the Jasper County schools. The population of Hardyville has grown 37 percent from 2020 to 2022, according to the U.S. Census. Williams sees Hardyville as a place where residents have a strong sense of community, which he believes will attract investors. Fair scores 21, Burroughs added 17 as number 25 Syracuse women beat Boston College 71 to 64. Associated Press. Number 25 Syracuse defeated Boston College 71 to 64 in a women's college basketball game. Daisha Fair led Syracuse with 21 points and 6 assists, while Sophie Burroughs added 17 points and 8 rebounds. Syracuse took the lead in the second quarter and maintained it for the rest of the game. Boston College made a late push but fell short. Syracuse shot 37% from the field but outscored Boston College from the free-throw line and in second-chance points. The legendary Australian author ahead of his time on AI. The Sydney Morning Herald. The late Australian writer Frank Morehouse understood the impact of technology on the publishing industry and the need for constantly updated copyright laws to accompany new advancements. In the 1970s, Morehouse was involved in campaigns advocating for authors' rights and highlighting the negative impacts of new technologies. He recognized that the photocopy machine, for example, allowed for the easy duplication of entire books, challenging the existing legal notion of fair dealing. Morehouse predicted that technology would lead to a crisis in literature, with reading becoming a minority activity and writers sliding toward obsolescence. He argued that each new technological advance required an update in the law to protect authors and their work. Morehouse's concerns are particularly relevant today as AI is being used to generate literature without permission or remuneration for authors. The recently exposed Book 3 dataset, used to train generative AI for Meta and Bloomberg, included about 18,000 Australian titles without authorization. This copyright theft has prompted the formation of the Copyright and AI Reference Group. Morehouse's understanding of the intersection between technology and literature serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggle to protect authors' rights in the face of evolving technologies. Tiana had a stroke age 10. Here's how she learned to play violin again. The Sydney Morning Herald. An innovative program in Melbourne is helping children with disabilities adapt instruments to enable them to play. The Adaptive Music Bridging program helped Tiana resume playing the violin using an instrument which has reversed strings that enable her to use her right hand for fingering, a chin rest developed using a 3D printer, and a grip aid on her bow. The program is part of a wider research project run by the University of Melbourne to understand better the needs of children with disabilities who want to play musical instruments. Jim Harbaugh and the NFL, if not now, then when? Yahoo! Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh will be in demand from the NFL as the league's Black Monday sees several teams fire their head coaches. The Los Angeles Chargers are particularly interested in Harbaugh, who has already had a successful stint with the San Francisco 49ers in the NFL, posting a 44-19-1 record over four seasons. Harbaugh, who took Michigan to three consecutive Big Ten titles in the past three years, has a new contract waiting for him to sign, offering him a reported $11 million per year. Japan's record arms spending will require controversial taxes, welfare cuts. South China Morning Post. Japan is increasing its defense spending to its highest ever level and easing lethal weapon exports in order to play a bigger role in international security. According to experts, this could compromise Japan's pacifist stance and hurt welfare spending. The government will have to make controversial political decisions such as reducing welfare spending to fund the increase in defense spending. In the long term, Tokyo will also have to revitalize its defense industry to secure funding. The export of Patriot missiles to the U.S. is vital in boosting Japan's defense industry and the Japan-U.S. defense equipment supply chain. Experts also said that Japan could fund the enlarged defense budget through financial surpluses, non-tax revenue and expenditure reforms. Japan recently signed a pact to jointly develop with Britain and Italy a next-generation fighter jet, its first major tie-up that did not involve the U.S. since World War II. The sale of Patriot missiles to the U.S. means Japan could provide lethal weapons to other countries at some point, including Australia, India and Southeast Asian countries. America's hell, a tyrannical Trump who can't be conquered. The Sydney Morning Herald. U.S. President Joe Biden has used a speech in Pennsylvania to challenge his predecessor Donald Trump in the run-up to the 2024 election. Biden invoked the words of Thomas Paine, author of The American Crisis, which were read to the troops of George Washington during the American Revolution. 
he warned that the tyrannical Trump would not easily be defeated. Biden also said that the U.S. should not embrace a leader who loves dictators and echoes the language of Nazi Germany. He argued that if the U.S. bowed to Trump, it would be a betrayal of its values. The speech followed an opinion piece by Margaret Sullivan in the Washington Post in which she criticized media outlets for focusing too much on Biden's presentation and poll numbers, rather than addressing the authoritarianism of another Trump presidency. Biden's campaign team sent out extracts from the piece to journalists. However, the president must not rely on the media to win the election for him, Sullivan argued. To die in cursing shelling as Putin marks Orthodox Christmas, live. The Independent. The Ukrainian city of Kherson was subjected to numerous shelling attacks from Russian-occupied parts of the Kherson region, resulting in two deaths and several injuries, according to local officials. The attacks occurred on Sunday, as Russian soldiers celebrated Orthodox Christmas on the front line. Russian President Vladimir Putin attended Christmas Eve services with families of military personnel who died in the war in Ukraine, stating that they are warriors of Russia defending the country's interests. Ukrainian air defenses successfully shot down 21 of the 28 drones launched by Russia overnight, and Russia also launched three anti-aircraft missiles against Ukraine. In addition, a Russian missile strike in eastern Ukraine killed 11 people, including five children. The attack targeted the town of Pokrovsk and nearby villages in Donetsk Oblast. This comes as Russia has shifted its aerial assault on Ukraine to frontline cities in the east after heavily bombarding major civilian hubs, including the capital city of Kiev. The Ukrainian Air Force reported that Russia launched a total of 28 drones and three anti-aircraft missiles at Ukraine. The ongoing conflict has resulted in significant casualties and destruction, and tensions continue to escalate between Russia and Ukraine. International condemnation of Russia's actions has increased, with countries such as the UK urging North Korea to cease its arms supply to Russia. Japan has also pledged support to Ukraine in the form of financial assistance and equipment to help combat drone strikes. Ignoring Taiwan's complaints, more Chinese balloons spotted over Strait. The Globe and Mail. Taiwan's defense ministry has accused China of threatening aviation safety in waging psychological warfare after detecting three more Chinese balloons flying over the Taiwan Strait. Taiwan is on high alert for Chinese military and political activity ahead of the presidential and parliamentary elections. China views the island as its own territory, a claim rejected by Taiwan. Hello, viewers. I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees World. It's time for our quick roundup of the latest news stories. Let's dive in. In France, it seems the butter sector has been churned up after a recent survey exposed flaws in nearly a third of dairy establishments. From excessive water content to insufficient salt levels, it's safe to say some butter manufacturers need to spread their knowledge a little better. Moving on, science says exercise is not only good for the body but also for the mind. It can make our brains younger, healthier, and even boost intelligence and mood. So, next time you're feeling anxious or down, remember to hit the gym and flex those mental muscles. Meanwhile, in the US, former President Donald Trump's legal troubles are set to overshadow the 2024 election. With four criminal trials on the horizon, Trump's strategy of claiming he won the 2020 election has made him the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. It's like a reality TV show that just won't end. In England and Wales, judges have cautiously been given the green light to use AI in writing legal opinions. While AI can be helpful, it's important to remember that it can also fabricate information and provide misleading or biased results. So, let's hope the AI system doesn't go rogue and start quoting Shakespeare or something. In other news, it seems the Confederation of British Industry, CBI, is losing its influence as the voice of business. The CBI is struggling to exert political influence, and even city executives are doubting its ability to influence Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer. It's like the CBI's voice has been put on mute. Over in South Carolina, the mayor of Hardyville has big plans to rival the neighboring areas of Ockady, Bluffton, and Hilton Head. With a new master plan that prioritizes quality of life and incentives for young families and businesses, Hardyville is ready to take the spotlight. Move over, Hilton Head, there's a new town in town. In the world of sports, number 25 Syracuse women's basketball team emerged victorious against Boston College. With Daisha Fair leading the way with 21 points and Sophie Burrows adding 17, Syracuse showed that they can shoot hoops better than anyone. It's a slam dunk for Syracuse. Legendary Australian author Frank Morehouse was ahead of his time when it came to understanding the impact of technology on the publishing industry. From the photocopy machine to AI-generated literature, Morehouse recognized the need for updated copyright laws to protect authors' rights. 
it's a reminder that we must continue to fight for the rights of authors in the face of evolving technologies. In Melbourne, a program called the Adaptive Music Bridging Program is helping children with disabilities play musical instruments. Through innovative adaptations like reversed strings and 3D printed chin rests, these children are given the chance to pursue their musical dreams. It's music to our ears. And finally, tensions continue to rise between China and Taiwan as Taiwan's defense ministry accuses China of threatening aviation safety. With Chinese balloons flying over the Taiwan Strait, it seems the two sides are playing a game of psychological warfare. Let's hope they can find a peaceful resolution and let the balloons soar freely. That's all for today's news roundup. Remember, I'm always here to bring you the latest stories from the Six Degrees world. Now, let's open the floor to you, our amazing viewers. What are your thoughts on these news stories? I'm all ears. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.